Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the fourth week of May 22nd to the 26th of May 2023. My name is Vito and Let's get this started with a quick promo code that you can use. It's Vito MA23. You can use this to double your deposit bonus. It's valid until the 31st of December 2023. All right, let's take a look at the previous week's fundamentals. Um, not really much going on here. We've got the Empire State Manufacturing Index coming up from the US pretty bad retail sales not that great either uh, we've got the canadian inflation numbers that's kind of slightly higher if we take a look at the trim cpi it's actually bumped up a little bit higher uh than the consensus it's at 4.2 percent but it is lower than uh, the previous month of 4.4 percent so if we take a look at it generally it is lower but it is higher than what the market was expecting from the canadian um inflation numbers uh and then we have the um monetary policy hearings from the bank of england uh, nothing really impactful going on there we've got the australian employment numbers unemployment jumped up uh significantly 3.5 percent to 3.7 percent uh other than that we have the weekly unemployment claims uh, that's slightly better number there uh slight improvement which is kind of in line with what the jobs market was kind of expecting and gearing towards to a little bit of an improvement in the employment sectors and then on friday We've got the panel discussion between uh, Jerome Powell and ex-chairman Ben Bernanke. And they, they basically the discussion was a comparison of the banking crisis that's going on right now in comparison to when Ben Bernanke was uh, F uh, Fed chairman uh, in 2008. It was a completely different scenario. Uh, so both parties pretty much kind of agreed on that. And also, um, I think some of the key wording that comes out um, on Friday was a little bit more on terms of what the FOMC is likely going to do next in their monetary policy. Now, this is slightly interesting because it's really more... 50-50 from my perspective, but uh, Fed watches are, are basically, you know, pricing in 90% pause. But what it's what Jerome Powell's message was basically sending as as basically um, it's kind of enough uh, in terms of how far the interest rate has gone up. But uh, the, the the decision would still come based on the upcoming data, obviously, and and also the consideration for this is that. Uh, should the FOMC stay ahead of the curve or should they actually pause and not over tighten, you know, the the monetary policy so that the economy wouldn't be impacted significantly. So this kind of sends a little bit of a dovish tone coming up from the FOMC. So it kind of reverses the US dollar a little a little bit on Friday, not that much of a significant move, uh, really, uh, pretty much in terms of uh, key technical levels last week. Almost all of the uh, the major currencies are pretty much in a range of market condition, although there was some significant breakthrough that we are going to take a look at during the technical side of this outlook. All right, for this week, Monday, pretty clear. On Tuesday, we've got the flash manufacturing PMI and services numbers uh, for France, Germany, UK, the Eurozone, as well as the US. Uh, if we take a look at the Euro side, um, nothing much is going on there. Expecting a little bit of an improvement in terms of manufacturing PMI numbers. Uh, so France, expecting a little bit of an increase, 45.6 to 46.1. Uh, Germany 44.5 to 44.9, uh, Eurozone 45.8 to 45.9, really not that significant. From the UK, 47.8, a slight bump to 47.9 is kind of expected. For the US, I think this is what uh, a lot of traders are going to be focusing on, is actually to see whether or not flash manufacturing PMI is able to maintain that 50 numbers, right? Uh, if we take a look at the Euro side, it is also below 50, <clears throat> so the improvement on the manufacturing side wouldn't be the, wouldn't be that much of a deal a big deal right uh, but the US side we're looking at a slight drop uh, from 50.2 to 50 we might get a higher flash manufacturing numbers that's basically what happens with uh, flash manufacturing PMI it kind of overshoots a little bit but I think the key here a key thing to take a note here is whether or not it's actually able to maintain a position above 50 because 50 is kind of the cutoff level. Anything below 50, we look at a little bit of contraction. Anything above 50, we look at a little bit of an expansion in the manufacturing sector. Services PMI, <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be a big factor here. All the services PMI from the Eurozone and the US side is already above 50. 
and has been above 50 for you know the past few months so it's not really uh, that much of a big deal uh, it's really the manufacturing numbers that we really want to focus on okay and then on wednesday we've got the rbnz potentially hiking another 25 basis points taking it from 5.25 percent to 5.5 percent uh, this is in line with how the rbnz uh, is doing their stuff Lately, it's actually to stay ahead of the curve, so they will increase uh, interest rates uh, going forward, right? And that's basically the kind of the scenario that we are anticipating this week as well from the RBNZ. Other than that, we've got speeches coming up from the Bank of England Governor Bailey, two in fact, on Wednesday. Uh, and then Treasury Secretary Yellen, right? Uh, this is going to be a speech that... Although it's a medium impact, it could turn into a very high impact news. Uh, again, this is more to do with the U.S. debt ceiling uh, crisis that's been ongoing. We do see a little bit of an improvement. I think we have seen positive talks uh, between Biden and McCarthy. But again, anything Yellen says that could kind of create a little bit of a ripple in the market there so take a note on that one that's going to be on wednesday now on depending on where you are wednesday or thursday if you're more on the um southern hemisphere uh on the on the um asian side of th uh things then you're going to be looking at thursday uh for the fomc meeting minutes but otherwise it's actually going to be on wednesday in the u.s for the fomc meeting minutes this is very important this is key after what um Powell said on Friday, I think the FOMC meeting minutes, uh, a lot of analysts and traders are going to come through this and find any hints to the upcoming meeting, whether or not there's actually going, there is that intention to pause interest rate hikes. And this will create um, a little bit of uh, volatility in a market when the meeting minutes is released. So keep an eye out on that one there. On Thursday, from the U.S., we've got the preliminary GDP, quarterly GDP numbers, uh, expected no growth at 1.1%. So we'll see what happens there. And then on Friday, we have the personal consumption expenditure. Uh, core PC price index is expected to remain stable at 0.3%. Anything higher, obviously, that's going to factor in into what, whether or not the FOMC needs to hike interest rates again in June. All right, let's move on to the technical. So let's take a look at some breakthrough that we are looking at on the dollar index here. So this one here has actually transitioned beyond 50% retracement, beyond the Ichimoku cloud uh, before that speech on uh, before the panel discussion on Friday, where we actually see a little bit of a dip uh, lower again on the dollar index. It takes it down back inside the Ishimoku Club, but from this perspective, we're currently looking at a dollar index that has, that has actually transitioned above the Ishimoku Cloud, and we actually have the whole Ishimoku Cloud as a support. So that takes it to all the way down to 102 right so in terms of resistance obviously we're going to be looking at 103.50 i'm still anticipating a potential move higher towards 104 on the dollar index here but again we could see this being pressured but again this is going to be within each vocal cloud so the move is likely going to be slow and there's a lot of supports for the dollar index itself now moving on to the dollar japanese yen first this one here something critical happened we surpassed 138 now if i were to zoom out and you guys were to look at 138 138 was basically the resistance in december 2022 so it's been nearly half a year we have finally surpassed um, 138 yen okay and the close last week was too close to call it was 137.96 just four pips below 138 so 138 is going to be the level that's going to be contested for the dollar japanese yen. if we take a look at the opening for uh this week market actually opens above the weekly pivot at 137.45 gives you a little bit of an indication in terms of immediate support for the dollar japanese yen is roughly going to be about 137.50 below that we still have 137 and then support one on the weekly pivot is at 136 so i'm anticipating if there's that pressure to the downside for the dollar japanese yen, it's likely going to be well supported at 137 or even 136 that's kind of the uh, the lower side of the range now if price is able to maintain that position above 138 this week it's going to be very interesting because we might actually see this one 
track higher. The first resistance is going to be at 139.25. The second resistance is going to be at 140.54. So about 140.50. So give or take, we're still anticipating a potential push higher for the Dow Japanese yen towards that 127.2% on the daily, which is at about 140 yen. So again, this is going to be the next key level for the Dow Japanese yen. Right now, momentum, no divergences, no nothing, no overbought condition or whatever. So I think we could still anticipate um, this gain to happen. On the smaller Fibonacci, if you're using this um, from the, um, the May Fibonacci, we're very close to 127.2%. Take a look at where the 161.8% is located. It is located at about 140.41. So we're still looking at a potential possibility for a push towards 140 for the dollar Japanese yen. But again, if anything were to happen, if we see that transition or prices are unable to break above 138, then we still have supports to the downside. 137, 136, worst case scenario, support to on a weekly pivot, it is at 134. Uh, 134.50 which was the key previous key level for the dollar japanese yen all right so that's pretty much it for the dollar japanese yen. let's move on to the others let's take a look at the aussie usd aussie usd is pretty much in a range bond market condition ever since march 2023 right ever since March, what we've seen is that we've seen the aussie usd trap between 66 cents and 68 cents um, and we're not really seeing the capability for the Aussie USD to actually break above 68 cents, break above the Ichimoku cloud. So in fact, we actually saw a rejection from that 68 cents about two weeks ago. Um, and right now, price is currently opening below the weekly pivot, uh, potentially moving lower towards uh, support one and support two. Uh, this level support one is going to be at 66 cents and then 65.50 for the Aussie USD not trending at all and if we take a look at this one here it's best to trade within the range it is it's it's quite an okay range i mean provides you with minimum risk as well because it's kind of trapped between 66 cents and 68 cents so give or take you have 67 cents as kind of the median for uh the aussie usd here all right moving on let's take a look at the euro usd here uh euro usd unexpectedly it actually broke below uh, the uh, key level 1.0850 to 1.09. In fact, uh, it pushes lower below 1.08, but then manages to climb back up again. But the transition that happened here is that what we saw, we basically saw a close below the Ishimoku cloud. Right now, it is currently testing 1.0825 as a potential resistance, which is also where the weekly pivot is located. If price is able to maintain a position above 1.08, this is going to be inside the Ichimoku cloud. All right, so... Um, doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, at, you know, if we take a look at 1.08, I think a lot of buyers are looking at this and say, hey, it's a good price to get in on the Euro USD. But this one here is a different case because it breaks below 1.0850, 1.09. Therefore, if we see that bounce on the Euro USD, we're likely going to see 1.0850 and 1.09 acting as a very tough resistance for the Euro itself. So right now, in terms of the momentum, I'm just waiting for this one to become oversold because at this point in time, uh, Stochastic is still not showing any signs of being oversold because the Stochastic needs to go back up above 20. And for as long as it stays below 20, we might actually see downward pressure continue uh, again on the Euro USD. And if that's going to be the case, if we fail to maintain a position above 1.08, could we see a deeper correction on the euro usd yes we could potentially see the move towards 61.8 percent that's located roughly about 1.0750 to 1.0740 that's also in line with the support one on the weekly pivot um at 1.0740 so keep an eye out on the euro usd here this one here uh pretty much at no man's lens at this point in time it's a little bit tough to uh, justify uh, a buy in the euro usd if you do that uh, then your stop loss is likely going to be about 1.0750 doesn't give you any strong indication either because we're not really oversold yet on the momentum side of things so if you're patient the wait for the signs of this one being oversold if it's able to maintain a position above 1.08 then yes i think 
we could potentially retrace a little bit higher to pull back a little bit higher towards 1.0850 to 1.09 otherwise if it's unable to maintain a position above 1.08 then we do anticipate a little bit of a push lower towards 1.074 1.0750 on the euro usd the pound usd very different case though with the pound usd uh, if you take a look at the positioning on the pound usd here unlike the euro usd where it's actually below the hmoku cloud inside the hmoku cloud we're very far away from the hmoku cloud now the past few weeks i've been talking about a potential pullback on the pound usd right it's either towards 1.25 or 1.23 why these two numbers because uh these two are the key resistances that was taken out and then we actually don't see the market pulling back to test this as support so 1.25 obviously that's done and dusted right now um that's going to be a key resistance 1.25 is going to be a key resistance if there's a daily close above 1.25 then we could anticipate further push higher on the pound usd okay. on one condition that the momentum is in line with that we saw a little bit of a crossover between fast stochastics and slow stochastics uh move back up above 20 those are the, uh, those are the conditions otherwise at this point in time uh it, because considering that it it's it opens the market below the weekly pivot there might be a higher pro probability for the market to pull back down a little bit higher now take a look at where the support one and support two on the weekly pivot is located support one is located at 1.2375 uh so we'll take that as you know kind of support between 1.2350 to 1.2375 i'm more interested with the support two on the weekly pivot because that's in line with the 1.23 level which is the key psychological price level the level that we kind of anticipate um the pound USD could pull back towards that level, right? So if we saw weaknesses on the Euro USD, if we see um, the dollar strength coming back into the market, that could be a probability on the pound USD that we could actually see a little bit of a retracement lower back towards that 1.23 level. Does that change the whole situation? Does that kind of make the pound USD uptrend irrelevant? Uh, at this point in time, probably not uh, because it's still an okay correction. It is a much deeper correction than what we anticipate um, if we take a look at the price action right now because right now we don't actually really want to see price going below 1.2350 uh, because if price is unable to go below 1.2350, we might actually form a hidden bullish divergence on the daily time frame. However, if it does break that level and continues to want towards 1.23, then going forward into the future, I do expect the pound USD to be in a more range bound market condition between 1.27, 1.26 to 1.23. So it kind of opens up for that potential there. All right. But it is what it is. Uh, currently, we are opening the week below the weekly pivot. So keep that in mind uh, for any uh, studying bulls in a market wait for a confirmation for a daily close above 1.25 before you jump back in uh, i think because the key level is 1.25 and i think we're going to be looking at a lot more buyers coming in at 1.25 rather than what it is right now but immediate support obviously we still have 1.24 to uh worry about so yeah intraday traders uh if you can navigate within the range there just keep an eye out on 1.24 and 1.25 at least for the next few days here um that would be your key guide to where the key levels are for the pound usd all right so with that good luck to trades and i will see you in the next outlook